you can give the soft liquid soap that is assigned by the hospital clean it properly and wrap it you can wrap it with a tissue paper and the solution disinfectant sterile solution is there to make it sterile what are the solutions there are three uh, name we used to use the Cytex solution and Cytex solution are very popular and beside that uh, you can use the metrocyte and aldehyde and Cytex. So Cytex is very popular we use the Cytex solution and how the transducer is submerged within the container that container is filled almost full or three-fourth filled with the solution and you submerged there's a rack you can hang for 20 minutes or the time uh, guided or con um, uh, mentioned by the department it could be 20 minutes, 25 minutes, 30 minutes then there is an uh, alarm and you will go to the room or somebody will go to the room and uh, especially you who put it he should take care of the end up to the end you will take it off and make sure by that time you should have your disposable dress eye glasses hand gloves because that side solution is corrosive it can go to your eye cause it can cause eye irritation it can come to your face in your skin Okay, so then after the time you took it out but make sure don't come into your body. Then run the tap water and hold with the running tap water. Okay, for a couple of seconds to clean nicely. And when you feel everything is clean, nothing wrong, you can take the rest of the um, drop of uh, water then dry up and put in the rack designated rack that transducer is sterile unless somebody touch it again so always keep one transducer ready for others usually they have more than one at least two maybe more that means if somebody use one other uh, one act will be preserved for somebody's use so in that way we will clean the transducer and sterile the transducer and there's a log book in the washroom and you have to write what time, which transducer it was submerged into the solution and did you check the activity there is a litmus paper to check the activity of the solution usually the solution's life is two weeks after two weeks you have to discard it, you have to make a new solution Usually the senior sonographer makes the solution and label it date of prepare and date of expire. And in the logbook you have to initial your name that who did, when, which date, at what, how many times and what time to time 
it was sterile. So that's the logbook you have to maintain because a state inspection will come to check the lab and will check the logbook. Statistically, it is found that improper cleaning or disinfecting the prop spreading some contagious disease in even though HIV. So they especially care about this kind of sterility done by the human touch and they want to come to see that um, washroom and logbook are you maintaining clearly or not based on that your license of the lab will be extended if it is everything done nicely if not they might lock you down so you're gonna you might lose the license temporarily okay so that's the way you will take care about that transducer that is used for transvaginal and also transperineal when you use for transperineal you will cover the same way when you will use the curvilinear and linear sequential transducer for the transperineal examination you have to cover the transducer if you don't have the transducer cover in your department you can use the gloves and most of the time this time uh, the gloves are latex free because the latex can cause allergic reaction so you're gonna get the gloves and put the transducer if this type of transducer put the transducer head into the thumb of the gloves put the gel put the transducer head and grab all the finger of the gloves tight it down or make a rubber band put the gel on top of it and you can use it for transperineal examination or if it is a big one curvilinear or linear sequential put the transducer head into the middle open the gloves put the transducer but before putting put the enough gel inside the gloves and hold the transducer head at the center of the gloves and take pull out all the finger of the gloves in such a way that when you hold the transducer you grab all the fingers of the gloves you can tie it down with the rubber band or you can hold it then put the gel on top of it and now you scan the transperineal or translabial area okay labial area or perineal area in order to see the designated structures for your protocol you will see the vaginal canal you will see the cervix you will see the ethmus if the uterus is small you can see the small uterus if the uterus is big you cannot see the body and fundus if it is a gravid uterus you can see the placenta if it is a lower you can also see the incompetency of the um, cervical canal and the urethra urethra can be opening and closing okay incontinence of the urine happens and if there is a cervical internal loss opening for the miscarriage we call it cervical incompetency you can check the cervical canal that it is closing it is closing and opening closing and opening and you can better measure the cervical length in order to make the decision Okay, that's all for this total procedure that I mentioned today for you. 
and please try to remember all these things and read the textbook read the techniques okay and uh, read the manual and watch those picture watch those picture 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 and you will be much much better with my informations okay you oh one more thing i forgot to tell you if you see the patient has two examination one is ultrasound of the pelvis another is barium mediated x-ray barium sulfate it could be upper gi or it could be enema okay uh, barium uh, enema and follow through they need the x-ray with the barium so now which procedure will be first the pelvic examination ultrasound or the barium follow through barium associated x-ray you have to patient should have the ultrasound first barium next they said ultrasound will be preceded than the barium follow through x-ray the reason is that if you if patient swallow the barium or enema is going through the rectum then barium can interfere with the sound propagation okay and those who are taking the barium they are uh, prohibited to drink water okay at the time if the stomach has contained a lot of water then it will be a bad procedure for the barium it will be more diluted that's why the um, uh, pelvic ultrasound will be done more earlier by that time the stomach is empty because patient needs blood up for bladder is full stomach is empty no water so then patient will have barium after that if barium was swallowed first the barium to be cleared from the bowel it takes more time so that day you may not do the ultrasonography because when the ultras barium will come into the intestine and all over so it will interrupt or interfere the pelvic organ because the sound propagation may be interrupted okay so that's why ultrasonography will be done before the barium mediated X-ray. They ask this question in the board. Okay, so I hope you understood, and that's all for today. And enjoy my lecture, and please keep watching and learn from my lecture. At least you're gonna learn something that is very helpful for your board exam. Okay, thank you very much for. Watching.